When you first hear about a stabilization test, it might sound like a simple comparison, just two cameras and a few steps back and forth. But in reality, image stabilization is a complex dance of mechanics, electronics, and algorithms. It's the invisible system that decides whether your handheld shot looks professional or amateur. To truly appreciate how close the Nikon ZR and Z6 III perform, we have to understand what's happening inside each camera every millisecond. Inside both models, there's a five-axis stabilization system. It compensates for motion along the pitch, yaw, roll, and horizontal and vertical shift. Each time your hand trembles, the system senses it through tiny motion gyros and accelerometers. These sensors feed information to the camera's processor, which then instantly adjusts the position of the image sensor to counteract that movement. What makes Nikon's system special is its speed and coordination. It doesn't just react, it predicts. By analyzing the direction and rhythm of motion, the camera learns the shooter's movement pattern and applies correction before the vibration becomes visible. Now, when the tester switches between the ZR and the Z6 III, that internal logic feels identical. Both cameras respond to small wobbles with the same fluid, organic correction. There's no jitter, no overcompensation. The motion feels natural, not robotic, which is crucial for cinematic handheld footage. As the test progresses, it becomes clear that both systems stabilize not just the image but the experience. The view through the screen feels anchored, confident, and easy to control. That's a subtle but powerful indicator of well-calibrated IBIS performance. Then comes one of the most fascinating parts of this test, the interaction between lens and body stabilization. The lenses in use, the Nikon 24-70mm f4 and the Tamron 28-75mm f2.8 g2, each have slightly different optical stabilization profiles. When paired with Nikon's IBIS, they cooperate through what's often called dual stabilization or synchronized compensation. The camera decides which system handles which kind of motion. Usually, the lens handles larger angular movements, while the body handles micro-vibrations and shifts. When you switch lenses between the ZR and Z6 III, you're essentially testing how well each body adapts to a different partner, and remarkably, both adapt effortlessly. There's no sign of mismatched correction or strange bounce effects. The footage remains smooth and coherent, suggesting Nikon's communication between lens and body is universal across models. The tester's observation about the mechanical shutter in the Z6 III versus its absence in the ZR adds another interesting layer. Removing a mechanical shutter usually reduces internal vibration, because there's no physical movement when taking a photo or starting a video. In theory, this should make stabilization easier, as there's less mechanical interference. However, it can also mean structural differences inside the body, like weight distribution or component placement, which can influence how the IBIS unit behaves. But in this test, none of those differences seem to matter. The ZR, even without a mechanical shutter, performs like a twin of the Z6 III. That consistency tells us something significant. Nikon didn't treat the ZR as a lower-tier experiment. It's a fully capable camera designed to deliver professional stability under the same engineering standard as the Z6 III. Then we move deeper into the real-world usability. Handheld stabilization isn't just about reducing shake, it's about maintaining motion that feels natural. For example, when walking, a certain rhythm in the movement is expected. If the stabilization completely erases that motion, the footage can look artificial, as if floating in space. On the other hand, too little correction makes it look amateurish. The sweet spot lies in between, a gentle, cinematic sway that mimics how human vision perceives walking. Both the ZR and the Z6 III achieve that balance beautifully. When the tester walks or jogs lightly, the footage retains a subtle sense of movement without being distracting. Each correction is smooth and proportional. You can tell the cameras aren't fighting the motion, they're working with it. That's what separates good stabilization from great stabilization. Even during fast pans or quick direction changes, there's no jello effect or lag in correction. This indicates that the re, a doubt speed of both sensors is fast enough to support the stabilization system efficiently. At this point, we start to realize something important about Nikon's approach. While other brands often highlight stabilization in marketing, Nikon tends to let performance speak through experience. In side-by-side -side comparisons like this, that quiet engineering confidence becomes clear. Next, the tester tests stabilization under different lighting conditions, bright exteriors, shaded paths, and transitions between light and dark. Why is this relevant? Because when exposure changes drastically, 
the camera's internal processing load increases. If the stabilization system isn't properly optimized, it might momentarily lose precision when the camera adjusts ISO or shutter speed. But here, that doesn't happen. Both the ZR and Z63 maintain consistent steadiness, even as exposure shifts automatically. That means Nikon's firmware manages multiple tasks in parallel without compromising motion control. There's also an intriguing human side to this experiment. You can sense the fatigue as the test goes on, the subtle breathlessness, the sweat, the heat. These moments remind us that tests like this aren't done in a lab but in the real world, under imperfect conditions. And that's what makes the results even more convincing. The ZR and Z63 aren't just surviving these tests, they're thriving in them. As the tester keeps moving, something else becomes noticeable, the natural roll correction. When holding a camera handheld, subtle wrist rotations often cause the horizon to tilt. In low-end systems, this is visible and distracting. But here, the horizon stays impressively level. That indicates the roll axis correction is finely tuned, which is particularly valuable for video shooters who can't use a gimbal. In scenes where the tester walks through uneven terrain, slightly rocky or bumpy paths, the cameras maintain consistent composure. Even when one step lands heavier than another, the footage doesn't bounce unnaturally. This is another sign of a well-designed stabilization algorithm that filters random vibrations while keeping intentional motion. Then, the 70mm focal length test offers a new perspective. Longer focal lengths amplify every tremor, making stabilization far more difficult. But as the tester switches between sport mode, normal mode, and EVR, the ZR and Z63 both hold their ground. The footage remains impressively stable, and the motion looks controlled. One key takeaway here is that Nikon's IBIS doesn't degrade significantly when zooming in, something not all brands achieve. Often, at telephoto ranges, you can see small microjitters that the system can't fully suppress. But in this case, the footage retains the same fluidity seen at wider angles. Another subtle point comes from the discussion about slope walking. The tester notes that walking on a gentle incline sometimes feels more stable. It's a fascinating observation because it connects biomechanics with image stabilization. When walking uphill, the steps are naturally softer, with less downward force. The camera's movement becomes smoother, and stabilization has less vertical correction to handle. It's a small but real-world insight into how human motion interacts with camera systems. From a technical standpoint, this also shows that Nikon stabilization has a strong vertical compensation curve meaning it handles both horizontal sway and vertical bounce effectively. As the test concludes, both cameras demonstrate near-perfect parity. Even after swapping lenses and repeating the same motion sequences, the performance difference remains negligible. This suggests that Nikon's IBIS module, firmware control, and stabilization algorithms are likely shared between both models. That's powerful knowledge for creators. It means that whether you buy the Z63 or the newer ZR, you're getting identical stabilization behavior, consistent, reliable, and professional grade. When the tester finally sits down to review the footage, the verdict comes with complete honesty. The footage looks the same. The colors, the tone, and even the rhythm of motion are indistinguishable. Any differences noticed are due to lens characteristics, not stabilization. That's an important point, because many people assume higher-end bodies automatically have better IBIS. But this test proves that Nikon's engineering consistency transcends the product hierarchy. Even in the ZR, WH, ICH lacks a mechanical shutter and targets a more video-centric audience, Nikon ensures flagship-level stabilization. Now, beyond the technical comparison, let's talk about what this means for real users. For vloggers, travel filmmakers, and handheld shooters, image stabilization defines the look and feel of their content. With the ZR or Z63, you can confidently shoot without relying on heavy gimbals. That's not only more convenient, it's liberating. Imagine filming while walking through a city or capturing candid street footage. The camera adapts to your motion seamlessly. There's no mechanical hum, no delay, no drift. You can focus on storytelling, not on fighting your gear. For documentary filmmakers or wedding shooters, stabilization means fewer retakes and more organic moments. You can follow action naturally, without rigid stabilization setups. Even for creative handheld B-roll, slow pans, push and S, and natural transitions, both cameras deliver fluid motion that feels cinematic out of the box. One of the most impressive things is how both systems handle low-frequency movement, 
the kind of slow sway that often happens when you're breathing or shifting weight. Many stabilization systems struggle with that, overcorrecting and causing visible frame drift. But Nikon's IBIS absorbs it naturally. The result is footage that feels grounded, alive, yet professional. By this point, the conclusion isn't just about performance numbers. It's about trust. Trust that your footage will stay stable, even when you don't have time to set up gear. Trust that your camera will behave predictably in every condition. And trust that Nikon's system, refined through years of iteration, works exactly as you expect, whether you're holding the ZR or the Z63. The final review confirms it all. Side-by-side -side footage reveals no significant difference in stability, tone, or exposure handling. The only variation comes from lens optics and exposure tools, not the stabilization system itself. And that's the hallmark of a great test, clarity through simplicity. The tester's method may look straightforward, handheld runs, walking sequences, and lens swaps, but that's precisely why it works. Real-world performance doesn't need complicated lab data. It needs honest, visible results. And here, the results are conclusive. Both Nikon cameras perform at the same high standard. As the session ends, there's a quiet satisfaction in the air. You can sense the exhaustion, the heat, the physical effort, but also the pride of uncovering something definitive. For viewers and camera enthusiasts alike, this test delivers more than a conclusion. It delivers confidence. Confidence that Nikon's mirrorless system, whether in its cinema-focused ZR or hybrid Z63 form, offers stabilization you can depend on. Confidence that when you press record, your story stays steady and confidence that technology, when engineered with balance and care, disappears into the background, leaving only the craft, the movement, and the emotion of the image itself. In the end, that's what this entire test is about. It's not just numbers or specifications. It's about the feeling of stability, the invisible hand that makes your handheld shots come alive. Both cameras, the ZR and Z63, prove one thing beyond any doubt. Nikon's stabilization isn't a feature. It's a philosophy. It's the promise that motion will never break your story.